Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to make a Brotato-like game in Unity. In this tutorial I will show you step by step and make it easy for you to code along with me. Let's get started. Starting with a brand new Unity project, the first thing to do is to create a new folder and call it Sprites. Then we drag and drop the sprite assets that can be found in the description. It's a file called sprites.png. Click on it and set the sprite mode to multiple and pixels per unit to 300. Click apply. Then click Sprite Editor, then Slice, and Slice automatically, then press Apply. Use this slider to see the sprites we sliced. Create a new empty game object and call it Player. Then create a new empty game object as a child of player and call it sprites. Now drag and drop the egg-shaped sprite into the sprites game object and call it body. Reset the position of all the game objects so they are at zero. Now we create a new layer that we call player. All the player sprites will use this layer to get rendered correctly. Change the sorting layer of the body sprite to player and set the order in layer to 5. Then we drag the face onto the scene, set sorting layer to player and order in layer to 6 to get rendered in front of the body. Then make it a child of the body game object and scale and rotate it as you want. It's time to add the feet, drag and drop each foot sprite onto the scene and call them foot R for right and foot L for left. Set the sorting layer of both feet to player. The right foot should have order in layer 3 and the left foot 7, so it shows in front. Now we need to animate the player. Select the player game object and click create in the animation window. Go to window, then animation if you don't find it. Create a new folder called animations and name the animation player idle. Then click the red record button and select the body. Create a new keyframe and shrink it down after 0.10 seconds. Then copy the first keyframes and paste them at 0.20 seconds. It will make him bounce up and down while standing still so it looks like he breathes very fast. Now we can press play to see how it looks. Beautiful! If we go into player settings and editor, we can check the enter play mode options checkbox. It will make it load much faster when we test our scene. Now we create a new animation for player running. Select this drop down that says player idle and create a new clip. Call it player running. Let's use the same technique as we did for the idle animation. For the first keyframes, set the legs far from each other. Then after 0.10 seconds, make the legs swap positions.
Then copy the first keyframes and paste them at 0 0.20. Then if we want, we can make the body bounce a little between each step. Make sure the body position is the same at the first, third, and fifth keyframe. And move it up a little on the new keyframes in between, which are the second and fourth keyframes. Now go to the animator window and select the player game object. Use the plus button to add a new float called Velocity. Then make a transition from player idle to player running. Remove transition duration and exit time and add the condition that velocity is greater than zero. Make a transition back from player running to player idle. Remove transition duration and exit time. Set the condition to velocity is less than 0 0.1. Now our animations are complete for the player. Let's make our first script. Make a new folder called scripts and create a new C sharp script called player. I usually remove the start and update function to start with a clean script. Create a new serialized field of type TextMeshPro, UGUI, called health text. This is where the player's health will be displayed. Don't forget to add using TM Pro at the top. Then add a field for the animator called anim and the rigid body 2D called RB. In the start function, we assign them to the correct component. Anim equals get component animator and RB equals get component rigid body 2D. Then add new float called move speed and set it to 6, and an integer called max health and set it to 100. Another integer called current health. A bool to check if the player is dead, and two floats for move horizontal and move vertical. A vector 2 to keep track of the movement, and an integer to set the facing direction of the player. In the update function, we check if the player is dead, and if so, set movement to vector 2, 0, set anim, velocity float to 0, and then return to escape the method. Set move horizontal to input, get axis raw horizontal, and move vertical to input, get axis raw vertical. Then set movement to a new vector 2 and pass the move horizontal and move vertical to it dot normalized. Call the animator set float method on velocity and pass movement dot magnitude. This will make the animator run the player running animation when the player is moving and player idle if not. Check if movement.x is not equals to 0. If so, we set the facing direction to 1 if movement.x is greater than 0. Otherwise, we set negative 1. Then we set transform local scale to a new vector 2 and pass the facing direction for x and 1 for y since we only want to change the x scale of the player. In the fixed update method, set rb.velocity to movement times move speed.
Back in the Unity editor, we give the player a rigid body 2D and set the gravity scale to zero, angular drag to zero, and freeze the rotation. Then add the player script onto the player game object as well. Now we add a new UI Text Mesh Pro object and install the TM Pro package. Double click on the text object to zoom out and align it to the top left by holding shift and click the top left square in the rect transform. Change the name to health text and assign it to the health text field in the player script on the player object. Now we can try running around with this little egg dude to see how he behaves. I want to make the camera a little darker and change the move speed of the player. We add the serialize field attribute to the move speed field on the player script to be able to change it from the editor. I want to change the camera size to 7 and the move speed variable on the player to 9. Now it feels much better. Back to the player script again, we add a onCollisionEnter2D to see if we collide with something. If so, we call the method hit, which we will create now. Hit means that the player got hit by something. We pass a damage parameter to the method and call the animator set trigger hit. Then we subtract damage from the current health and set the health text to mathf.clamp, current health zero and max health to make sure current health cannot go outside the span of zero to max health. We make a new method called die to set dead to true when we are out of health. Then we will check in on collision enter 2D if we collide with an enemy. But since we don't have any enemies yet, we will give the player a collider and a hit animation first. Add a new component to the player called Circle Collider 2D. Then we add the white egg sprite onto the player because we will make it flash white when the player gets hit. Set the sorting layer to player and order in layer to 10 and decrease the opacity of the hit sprite to zero. Then in the animation, we create a new clip called player hit. Make the animation go from full opacity on the hit sprite to slowly fade down to zero opacity again. I noticed that I accidentally got the animations folder inside of the sprites folder and some animations were created outside of it. Let me clean that up quickly. Now click on the player hit animation and uncheck the loop checkbox since we don't want the hit animation to repeat.
Now in the animator window, we make a transition from any state to player hit, set transition duration to 0.1 and exit time to 0.2. Then, using the plus button, we create a new trigger called hit, and add it to the condition on the transition. Make a new transition from player hit to player idle. Then go back to the first transition and set exit time to zero and transition duration to zero, and uncheck the checkboxes. We might need to tweak these values a little. In the new transition from player hit to player idle, we set exit time to 0.2 and transition duration to 0.1. Now open the player script, and in the update method, just for testing purposes, we check if player presses space, and if so, we call the hit method. Now we can press play and test it, running around and pressing space to see the player get hit. If we think it flashes too fast, we can go back to the animator and tweak the values as we want. Now back in the player script again, we will make some final fixes. In the start method, type health text, dot text equals max health to string. And above that, we type current health equals max health. Now we can see that we lose health every time we press space. Now we check when we get hit if our current health is less than or equals to zero. If so, we die. When we die, we can't move the player anymore. That's pretty much all that happens right now. Now as a final fix, we increase the size of the health text to make it easier for you to see it. And that's it for the first part of this tutorial series on how to make a Brotato-like game in Unity. In the next part, we will add the enemies. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next part. Thank you for watching.